There we go. Okay, so um, today I uh, started by helping Kevin Lung with his advanced class. He's going to do the Invisible Man project. But we're, we're going to work on today is a basic overview of Photoshop. And just to let you know, my computer is really sluggish. And I don't know whether it's the computer or it's my internet connection at the moment, but I had computer problems this morning. Um, so I'm working with a different computer and it's a little bit older and doesn't have, it's not quite as peppy. So I don't know what the issue is. But my goal is to give you an overview of Photoshop by doing lesson one. And this is the start file. And this is the end file as soon as that pops up. And it's a little slow, it's sluggish. So it's going to take a little while to do all of this. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and disable talking for Kevin. Let's go ahead and do that. So I've changed that. So you just see me here. And hopefully that will speed things up a little bit. Who knows? Okay, so before I get started with this lesson today, do any of you have any questions? You can either put that um, in the Q&A or you can also, that would, you know, could also put it in, uh, let's see, yeah, that would probably be the best thing, Q&A. It might also be, no, I don't care about that. I'm good, come on. I'm getting security problems with my computer here. I wonder if things have been changed and I don't want them to, to be affected. This is gonna be a long hour. Okay, no questions? Okay, so we're good to go. So when you're working on this lesson, um, by default, it opens up in tabs. What I wanna do is I'm gonna close the Van Eyck piece, just to make it simple. Close that, and I don't wanna save it. Okay, so you'll notice at the top, I have the two files in tabs, but what if I wanna see them side by side? Um, there is a way of doing that. And to do that, you go up to, win to, um, up to window and you go to arrange, and I'm gonna select two up, vertical. And now I should be able to see them side by side. And there we go. So we want our end file over here to the right to match, or, uh, or our start file over to the right to match our end file over to the left. So that's what I'm gonna proceed to do. I'm gonna take you through this. And this is kind of typical. Um, I have the, the start file or the end file selected. And you can see, um, if we look down here at layers, and I'll go ahead and I'll pull the layers tab off so you can see what's going on here. We have a text layer so that we can add the name Elaine. We have a ribbon layer. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to create a, a ribbon that goes in the back of a lane. And we have an adjustment layer. And if I turn that layer off, notice that the photograph, um, while it's a good one, um, looks much better when we make some adjustments to the brightness contrast. Okay, so those are basically, you know, this is kind of basic um, retouching to that you need to do to most photos. And so I'm going to put the, the layers tab back in here. And it will be down on the lower right hand corner. And then what I need to do is click on the right one, make sure that it's there. And you can see already they have the layer that's turned off that says happy birthday. So we're gonna leave it off for the time being. So one of the things that you wanna do for starters, anytime you open a file, and I'm gonna depart from the book just a little bit. In some cases, probably a lot, but um, I'm gonna depart from the book. And um, 
I'm going to show you what needs to be, what I think is good practice. Um, the first thing that you should always do is to check the size and the resolution of your image. Now for us, because we're not going to print this, it's a non-issue, but in the future, when you're working on a project that will have to be printed, then it will be extremely important before you get started with it and you do all that work um, on the photograph to make sure that you're working on an image that is a good size and a, a, a good resolution. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to image, image size, and let's see what it, ha what it gives us. This is probably the best way to do that. And you can see that I have resample turned off. There are times when you'll want to use resample, but for right now, if I wanted to change the size of this, I could. If I did change the size, it would also change, affect the resolution and vice versa. If I wanted this a higher resolution, then it would make it an even smaller image. So right now, this is postcard size. It's five inches wide by almost seven inches tall or high. And that's really kind of the bare bones minimum you need for a printable image. So I can leave that alone. I'm not going to tinker with it because if I do, if I say, you know what, I really want this at 300 pixels per inch, I can do that as long as I have the height and the width linked to one another. So if I change that to 300, and I hit the tab key, now you'll notice that it's only three by four. It's considerably smaller, okay? But there will not be a degradation in the image. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna cancel and leave it at 200 pixels per inch, and that will be fine for us. But anytime you open a file, um, that's the first thing that I would always do, just to check. And if you need to resize it or change the resolution, then do it at that time, not afterwards. Um, and that will, you know, I mean, for an image for the web, this would be plenty big. Because I could change that to, to, to 72 pixels per inch and it would have made it huge. So the next thing I want to do is look over here to layers. And what I prefer to do, because I don't want to stomp on my original image and accidentally make a mistake, um, I like to make sure that my um, projects that I'm working on or non, anything that I do to them are non-destructive. And so by habit, I always make a copy of my background image. And to do that, you select the layer by clicking on it. And then I can either drag it onto the new layer tab right here, and that will make a copy of them. Excuse me. That will make a copy of it. And you can see I have rose copy. And then I can turn off the one at the bottom. I am, um, and I don't need that. And hopefully I don't ever need that. But if I really screw this one up, then I can always go back to that original image. I haven't messed it up. Another way to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and put this in the trash. Okay, let's turn that layer back on so we can see what we're doing. It is you click on the layer and make sure that it is selected and then you hit Command J. So on the PC, for those of you who are working on a PC, that's Control J. And that will make a copy of it. So that's what we're gonna work on. We're never gonna work on the original, we're gonna work on a copy. The next thing that I want to do is to brighten this up, um, brighten the image up a little bit. And if you typically start with a digital image, um, there is a lot of hidden information, a lot of information in the shadows and the highlights and that sort of thing that can be revealed just by using an adjustment layer. And if you, on your um, Photoshop, if you should be able to see next to the properties panel, a tab that says adjustments. If you don't see that, then go to window and select adjustments. Okay, and so that pops up either way. So now I have something to work with. Now, um, the book wants us to use brightness contrast. That's sort of a basic approach. And what I like to do when I use any of those three, let's go back to adjustments. You can use brightness contrast. You can use levels. 
or in, the, in this case here, we could use um, a curves layer. These all adjust the range of tonality between the lights and the darks. You typically have the most control by using curves, um, but I usually switch between the three of them. Right, and I can, you can use all three if you wish, but that would double up. You'll notice that um, by just clicking on it, it already has added an adjustment layer to my layers panel. And when I double click on this, it should bring up this dialog box. Now, and it does. So now what I could do, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna click auto to see what it does with it. And because my computer is sort of sluggish, should happen almost instantaneously, but it's not. So, um, come on, come on, come on. The little wheel is spinning and hopefully it doesn't crash. And it's gonna take a moment. This should happen very quickly. If this is a small image. As I said, I don't know whether it's my internet speed or my computer. So we'll see what happens. And notice that already using the default settings, um, the rose looks pretty good. We might dress it up a little bit more and increase the brightness just a little bit. And then leave it alone until you get it to match the one on the left. Okay, and again, it's redrawing, it's taking time. It's uh, going to take some work here. So what can I say? There we go. Okay, so that's pretty close, not quite. The flowers in the background probably need a little bit more punch. So let me show you some other ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off brightness contrast. And that goes back to the original image. And just to let you know, by default, adjustment layers affect the every layer beneath it, unless you do something a little bit different. And we will be doing that in other exercises. So if you're not careful, if you have multiple, uh, multiple layers underneath this, each of these adjustment layers will affect every single one beneath it. So what I wanna do is select adjustments again. And this time I'm gonna use um, curves, but I'm not gonna select, um, auto, I, I can, I guess I could select auto and see what um, um, I have. But notice that the, the little adjustment or the curves here, or the, um, the, uh, the bars indicate that everything is pretty much in the dark range here. And so this is going to redo, and it's pretty similar to what we had before. And I can come back in here and I can adjust these curves, or I can use these little eyedroppers over here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the darkest darks and the lightest lights and see what I can do. So the top one picks is the dark, darkest darks. And then I come over to my image and I can find probably the darkest dark down here in the shadows and see what that does. And when I click on it, notice that it's considerably different. I mean, it's about the same as what we had before, the auto adjustment, but it's considerably different. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lightest light. So I click on the bottom one, make sure that it is selected, and now I find kind of maybe the lightest light in here. And I'm going to click on that, and I think that might be right about here. Let's see what we get. It might be actually too much. We'll see what happens. It's going to take a bit. And if you click around a little bit, um, you'll find that it makes some dramatic changes. So how about if I click right? Let's click here and you'll see what happens. Okay, and that will be should be decidedly different. I think it's just taking time to redraw. And you can affect these curves individually. So I'm going to go back here make sure that the white point is selected. And I think, there we go, okay. See, it took a while to redraw, and that's just too much. So I need to go back again with the white point. That's because it, it affected this one here. But if I come back up in here and I click, and I wait a couple of minutes, 
and just maybe have a sip of my drink and um, wait for it to redraw, it will correct itself. And it's just taking a, a boatload of time. And if push comes to shove with today, um, I might have to just go with the default settings and be happy with it. So it's taken a moment to redraw all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's really going slow, I say. So I'm gonna go back to auto. Um, anyway, you're gonna to have to take my word for it and see what happens. There we go. And that, that's close, but again, the flowers in the back aren't quite as intense. So that's another approach. And you'll notice that if I turn on brightness contrast, in addition to that one, it should dramatically, notice how it dramatically affects it so that you're kind of doubling the effect. And I don't wanna do that. So the next one that I'm gonna try, Again, by selecting um, adjustment layers, is I'm gonna try the um, levels. So that's this one in the middle. So I'll select that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this one manually. I'm gonna click this one and drag the highlights down here until they go right about to the edge of this and see what we get. Let's try that. And that is much better. Notice how the flowers in the background are really bright now. So that's even a better result than what we have in the final over here, but that's closer. So I'm gonna live with that one and I'll leave the other layers turned off. Okay, any questions so far? So adjustment layers are used a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And there are a ton of them here. We go back again, and I'm not going to click on any of them, but if you want to turn it into a black and white image, you can. If you want to use um, uh, other features, um, you just hover over them. This one is use saturation. You know, this one is um, to, to invert adjustment layer. Um, we have this one here, which is a new exposure layer. Here is um, another one here. And notice how the little tab pops up. Vibrance, we can adjust that to make the colors even more intense or vibrant. But again, you can start with a mediocre image and you can really um, pump some, some life into it and make it um, pretty good. Um, if, if the photograph is really out of focus, then there isn't much that you can do to that. That's probably the only thing you can't do. Like you'll notice that the background here is out of the depth of field and it's really kind of blurred. I can't bring that into focus. It's too late. So let me go back to properties and let's try something else. So the next thing that they want us to do on here is um, we want to build this little um, tab here, this little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new layer. I don't want it to be on this background layer. I need to make sure that I am on the correct layer. And I don't, I want it to be above my adjustment layer. If I want, I could turn on the ribbon layer and I could put it on that one. But again, my habit is not to do that. I would rather keep them separate. So again, I don't wanna damage the one that they've already given us. I want to keep them separate. I can always link them together later. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to create a brand new layer and for my ribbon. Now, the way that they want us to do this is as follows. And I can show you, I think we have time today to do it a different way. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit by hitting Command Plus. And I'm going to move this over a little bit. That's probably a little bit too much. So let me zoom out a little. Come on. Command minus. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to use the zoom tool then. I just want to zoom in on 
um, this area a little bit. I don't want it to be too big. And it is pretty, pretty, pretty big. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. But because my computer is so sluggish, it's really not working that well for me. Okay. So now I can go ahead and scroll down. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It's disappearing. So now I'm to get the hand um, to move it, I'm holding the space bar down. There we go. That's, this is fine for us. So what they want us to do is, it's the third um, tool down here. And if you hold down on uh, your button, I want to select the polygonal lasso tool. Okay. And then what I want to do is I'm going to, with that selected, I'm going to come over here on my new layer. Come on. Make sure that it's selected. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold, put cap lock. So caps lock. There we go. Okay. Back on. There we go. Okay. So with cap locks on, I see the little crosshairs. And now what I need to do is I'm going to approximate the size that I see over here. So I'm going to start by clicking here. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and cross a, move over across here a little bit. And I'm a little bit too low and that's okay. And I'm going to click and then I'm going to move the mouse in a little bit. And I'm going to let go of the shift key. And I'm going to try to find something in the midpoint. And I'm going to click again. And I'm going to move it over again so that's right under the other one. And click again. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and move it across. Click again. And then I'm going to move to the the origin, and you'll see the cursor change in a little circle in the lower right hand corner. And then you click and you get the marching ants. So now what I want to do is I want to fill it with a color. And to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the foreground color in the left hand corner. And it should bring up my color wheel. I'm going to switch to blue. Okay. So it's in the blue range. And I'm going to come over here. And notice that when I move my cursor over the other one, the other, it says, it says a lane, I can click. And when I do, it should. Come on. Okay, it's not doing that. So let's come back up here. And let's pick one from here. A little bit darker. And I'm sure the book tells us exactly what we're supposed to use. Um, you know, either CMYK settings or RGB. That's close enough for us right now. And I'm going to click OK. And then what I need to do is to fill that Okay, I need to, and it's going to take a minute because everything is very sluggish. There you go. I can either use uh, the fill bucket, which is found, I believe it's underneath the brush tool here. Nope, it's not. Hold on here. I use it, I do a different way. Maybe it's under the eraser tool. Oh, no, it's probably under the gradient. There we go. No, it's not. Okay. It's underneath the gradient tool. So here's the, the paint fill bucket. And with that selected, I can move over here and I can just click. If I turn off caps lock, you can see the little paint bucket and it will fill. Come on. Again, it's taking time. There you go, now it fills. I think there's a better way to work. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now what I'm done, I need to get rid of this selection, which sometimes are called the marching ants. 
So to get rid of that, I can hit Command D or Control D on the PC, and that deselects. Now, if if I need to, I can turn on. I already have it turned on. I can zoom out here. So let's zoom out a minute. And um, if I need to move this around, I can because it's on its own layer. I can select my ribbon or my ribbon one here, layer one, and I can rename it if I want. Um, I can double click on the text and click in here and highlight it, and I'll just name it ribbon two. Okay. Now with that one selected, I can use the move tool here, which is the little crosshair at the top of the left of the tools, and I can move this around. See? So if it needs to go up a little bit, I can move it up. If it needs to move down a little bit, I can move it down. If I need to stretch it, make it a little bit fatter, I can. So I can hit Command T to transform. And now I can stretch this out a little bit. Like so. And I can take the bottom one and I can pull it down a little bit and make it a little bit fatter. But you'll notice it doesn't quite match here. And this is not centered. And the way we did this is the way we did it. So I'm going to use a slightly different technique that we will cover in a later lesson. But um, what I want to do is I want to create a shape layer. So I'm going to turn this off. And instead, I'm going to go over here and underneath this arrow, it's the third one down after the type tool. I'm going to click here. And I can either select the rectangle tool, which isn't a bad way to go. And I can go ahead and I can come over here and I can make a rectangle. But I need to make sure if we'll, we'll look in a minute, um, I'll show you here. Okay, that at the top, it says that it is a shape layer. And I have an option whether I want to pass pixels or shape. By default, it selected shape and it uses the default foreground color that I used before. Well, now I need to indent this. So what, now what I'm going to do is under the pen tool, I'm going to add an anchor point. So I come over here and right in the middle, I click and I add an anchor point. Now I can use this tool here, which is a selection tool. Actually, I want the direct selection tool. There we go, direct selection tool. And now I can move this in. So, nope, I didn't want all of it. It's all moving and I don't want that. Um, yeah, that's okay. Now notice how it's curved. Let me hit um, Command Shift Z to, un to redo that so that it moves in. So you can see what happens. See how that's curved? I don't want it curved. And it does that by default. So what I can do again under the pen tool is I can select convert anchor point. And instead of using a curved anchor point, when I click on that, it's going to turn it into a corner point. And there you have it. So now this one, I can move that point up or down and left and right. Um, and I can resize it to my heart's content. So I'll switch back to um, my selection tool, and I'm going to deselect it, and I'm set to go. So this I find would be is a, is a better choice, but they're showing you the selection tool, and the selection tool, and there's a number of different ways of making selections, is in many instances it is the preferred choice. I just think in this instance it would be a little bit different. And again, if I want to, to move this over a little bit, I hit Command T, transform, make sure that layer is selected. And I can go ahead and I can just stretch this out a little bit. There you go. 
And if I need to move that endpoint here, I can do that by selecting that individual anchor point. Um, I see that I have a question here, and I'm not ignoring you, just that I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to here. Let's deselect and I'll answer your question. Hold on here. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know whether the question is by Andy Hernandez. Couldn't you use the eye drop color from either picture? And normally you can. I don't know whether it's my, the sluggishness of my computer or what. But you should be able to select a color anywhere on the desktop. And that's really kind of a nice feature. Okay. So um, why I couldn't, it just I think it's probably my computer. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to select this um, finished piece here real quick. And I'm going to select the type tool. And what it's going to do is it's going to select the last type settings that were used. And you can see that we want Minion Pro Italic at 32 point. And we're using this yellow color here. And the reason I say that I'm cheating is that, that when I go back to this image that we're working on, it will have those same settings. Otherwise, you would have to go up here and you would have to select, if you wanted a different font, you could. Or um, if you didn't want to go there, again, I'm only doing this because um, my computer is so sluggish. Um, let's go back again. Notice how things are disappearing. I have the feeling it has to do with my um, video card. Um, that could be it, because I have a large monitor behind my desktop to help me work. So instead, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select the type tool. And it really doesn't matter where you, where you click on the screen, it will automatically create a brand new layer. So now I can click here, right in the middle of um, my image. And it comes up with this default um, greeting, which is lorem ipsum. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type Elaine. E-L-A-I-N-E. -E. There you go. And when I'm done, I go back to the Move tool. And now I can take Elaine. And using the Move tool, I can move it on top of my, come on, catch up with my mouse here. There we go. Now I can place it, put it in place. Okay, whoops. And if you need to nudge it in place with a move tool selected and the proper layer selected, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it up. and over. So that's what I'm doing. And we'll, voila, we have um, finished our lesson. But there's one more thing that I'd like to do that the book doesn't have us do that I hope um, this won't crash. But we should be set to go. So I want to make sure that my rectangle is selected. And um, I want to fill the rectangle with a texture that I see here in um, the first ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of the ribbon, the one that they provided us. I'm not going to use the original. So to make a copy, I either click and drag it onto new layer, or I select it and I hit Command J. And I'll just hit Command J to make a duplicate of it. And I'm going to move it to the top, very top, just by clicking and dragging it. 
So here's the ribbons copy and I'll use my move tool and I'm gonna pull it down here. Now what I wanna do is I want to use a feature called content aware fill. And what it's gonna do is I'm gonna remove the words happy birthday because this is non-editable text. And I'm gonna replace it with a texture in the background. So to do that, I need to um, select, just maybe using the rectangle tool. Whoops, where are we here? That's the top one, wrong one. There we go, the rectangle marquee tool. And I'm gonna highlight the word happy birthday, or happy. Just leave it at that. And then I'm gonna go to edit, fill, and I'm gonna to go to content aware fill. And you'll notice it's only taking from that layer. Okay. So it's showing me a preview of what that's gonna look like. And I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And it's gonna take that little section and it's gonna put it on its own layer on top of that. And I can either leave it as a separate layer or I can join them together. So it's either really sluggish or I can go ahead and deselect now. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select and notice how it beautifully filled it with that texture. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill the other doing the same thing. On the same layer. And I'm going to go to edit, content aware fill. And this should, oh, no, it did create another layer. I just don't see it yet. So let me cancel. Because it's only taking a selection from that area. So I'm going to take this one. Oh, I see what it did. Never mind. It is on here. There we go. So this is the new layer. So I'm going to take these two layers and I'm going to hold down the shift key or the command key and select them both and then hit command E to merge them together. And now what I'm going to do with birthday selected, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to content aware fill. Let's see what we have here. So it's taking it from there and the word birthday should go away in a minute. It's taken a while to catch up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Little wheel down here is spinning. So it's thinking about it. This should go much quicker on your computer. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. And again, I'm going to merge those two layers together. <clears throat> so I'll take this one, hold down the command key, select this one, and hit command E to merge those two layers. Now what I want to do <clears throat> is deselect, so Command D. And I want to put this layer on top of, which it already is, but on top of the rectangle. So I'm going to move it on top by using the Move tool. And I'm gonna use that rectangle as a clipping mask. And it's just so slow and sluggish. It's just bouncing all over the place here for me. And I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to select. It's 
get this in place again. Just have to go really slow. There you go, okay. So now what I'm gonna do <clears throat> with the copy of, you know, this ribbons layer on top of the rectangle, I hold down the option key and move between these two layers. And you'll notice how the cursor changes. And I click and it should use it as a clipping mask and it does. So now you'll notice that when I zoom in, it now has an, the texture, the same texture that's used for the ribbon in the happy birthday that they gave us before. So let me use the hand tool. Normally I would hold this down the space bar, to move that up. There you go. So now you can see that. That's a better way to go. But instead they're just showing you how to use the fill tool to fill with a solid color. Um, I've just shown you how to use a texture from another area and fill it. Um, Content-aware fill these days is used all the time for many different things. And it's a very powerful, powerful tool. Um, <clears throat> anyway, before I'm done today, and I'm just about done. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. You tell me. Do you have any questions before we call it quits today? Um, this just gives us a quick overview. And what I'd like you to do um, over the weekend is to do lesson one. And then on um, next week, um, be prepared to work on lesson two, um, which covers selections. So next week, we're gonna be working on this tool here, which is the rectangular and elliptical selection. And the one that we used here early on, which was the polygonal. And we also will probably be using a few other of these two. There is the magnet lasso and the lasso tool. So these are all different ways of selecting um, elements of your photograph. And then um, uh, so being able to isolate elements and combining with others. We'll be using the smart um, selection tool here. And we'll be using the magic wand for the quick selection, object selection, we'll be using all of those. That's what the next lesson covers. Um, yeah, sure, you can put your own name instead of Elaine. Just make sure that it's, when you turn it in and you upload it to um, uh, Google Drive in your folder, Make sure that, um, yeah, it just goes inside your folder so I know whose it is. Okay, the next question is, do these files come with Photoshop? Um, if you have the textbook, yes, they do. Um, but you need to download them. And if you don't have them yet, then I will show you right now where to get them. Um, I have provided them for you. So what you do is if you go to The Google Drive that I'm sharing with everybody, this one right here, you'll see that there is a folder right in the middle here. It says PSCC 2020 lesson files. And if you double click on that, you'll find all of the lessons in the book here, all of the files that you need. Don't remove them, just simply make a copy of them. So you, today, for today, you'll need lesson one. So select it and then right click on it and say that you want to download it to your computer. And that's all you have to do. Um, hopefully my explanation is sufficient, but um, some of you like, it would be a good idea to have the textbook as a backup. Um, then that's what you'll need to do. Okay, does that answer that question? There we go. Any other questions? Um, again, make sure that you, if you haven't emailed me to add you to Google Drive, and if you have been <clears throat> added, make sure that in shared, the shared folders that you select it and put in another folder with your name on it you know, in, in the one that we were sharing for this class. Um, Okie doke. 
Um, a specific name, just um, less than one is fine. That's for this file, so I know which one it is. And then if you let, if you name them in, in that order, then I will just see them in sequential order. And at the end of the semester, um, and this is true for people who don't attend, um, the live webinars, that, and you see it online in, in its recorded version. Um, then at the very end of the semester, if you've done all 12 lessons, you get 10 points, which is equivalent to one of the assignments that I will be giving. You'll get full credit. That's all there is to it. Okay, um, so are we done for today? I am, I'm tired of computer problems. Um, I gotta call Macintosh and get a replacement for my other computer, so. And this one is just too slow, too sluggish. So if there aren't any more questions, then we're done for today. I will um, stop sharing. I will pause the recording. And I will see all, some of you tomorrow. If you want to join me tomorrow, I'll be redoing and repeating the same thing. Um, and then uh, we'll see you next week. We'll work on lesson two. And Pretty much after we finish lesson four or maybe lesson six is when we'll start working on the first assignment, which will be to do a, the postcard assignment or the selfie photo bomb. I'm tempted to have everybody do the postcard assignment this semester because that's in written format and you can, you can do that by taking bits and pieces of small images and putting them together. You know, um, at, at the time when I assign it um, and we're ready for it, um, I will give a, a demonstration on how to do that. Anything else? No? Okay. Then all of you are free to leave if you wish. Um, I'm going to pause recording this and I hope to see all of you. Let's see. I would, uh, the question is from Markeisha, you know, you haven't received the book yet. Um, ideally, I would like you to keep up with the lessons as I am completing them so that by the end of the week, we're on the same page. If you, if it takes you longer, it takes you longer, but um, it's not a good practice to wait until the end of the semester to complete them. Because more often than not, at the end of the semester, I've had students who have not completed all the lessons and instead of getting an A they've gotten a B or instead of a B they've gotten a C and that is sad um, you know this is the easiest part and it really it, it's as I explained the other day this is the pres prescriptive part of the uh, of the teaching just to teach you the basic tools of Photoshop and if you follow the lessons as I've described them today or um, if you follow each you know, uh, step in the book, um, either way, it's, it's, it's kind of a slam dunk for an A on a project. But again, you have to do them all to get an A. Okay, so if there are any more questions, you are free to leave and I will um, again pause this and I will see all of you um, either tomorrow or next week. Okay. Bye-bye everybody.